Welcome back to a new category in the Digital Forensic series. In this category, I will be showing you how to perform manual file carving on a FAT file system. A hypothetical scenario is that our department has taken a criminal into custody and have confiscated their USB flash drive containing sensitive data, which is crucial to the investigation. Our job as a Digital Forensic Analyzer is to extract all data containing on this USB by any means, without altering any data. This segment will, cover, will be covered over several videos as it's quite in-depth and lengthy. I will show you how to extract each file individually and rebuild the entire cluster chain to then access the USB in its full form. This is the first segment on the FAT file carving. I will explain a few notes on the FAT file system before actually beginning to start the file carving process as this is crucial for the understanding of how this works. I will show you how to install Bless Hex Editor as that's what we'll be using to analyze the disk image. And I will show you how to validate files that are going to be forensically analyzed. This should um, help you understand more on how to carve out files within a FAT file system. So if you want to skip ahead to the actual carving, please check the description below for timestamps and that you can forward to either in this video or on the next video. This is the first image that I want to cover. This shows each different FAT and all its parameters and each FAT version of the file systems have different limitations. Here is a table that's showing you the differences. You can pause the video here and view the image a bit more. The image that we're working with today is a FAT16 image. It's a uh, 125 megabyte sized image. Keep in mind that we're going to be specifically analyzing a FAT16 image, so all the limitations and parameters will be revolved around this particular FAT file system. Next image. This image depicts the logical layout of the hard disk image. So there's always a partition, and within that partition, there exists a file system. In our case, it's the FAT16 file system. This file system will have three areas shown in the yellow, a reserved area, a FAT area, and the data area. The reserved area contains the boot sector. Take note of the difference that may cause confusion in some individuals. There is always some sort of file allocation table in the file system which points to the files in the data area. When you try to understand, so let's say it's a difference, okay? So when you are referring to the file allocation table, you generally should say the fat in the file system but then if you are talking about a fat file system it should be addressed as a fat file system because it is a differentiation that is the easiest method to differentiate because there could be a lot of confusion when you say fat file system as opposed to the file allocation table itself and the file allocation table is a table which points to the data in the data area whereas a fat file system is incorporating the entire file system and it was that's the format of the of the drive the data area is split up into clusters which have prefixed lengths which use an entire cluster and sorry files use an entire cluster regardless of how small they are so i have an example Let's say if the image cluster size is 1024 bytes, 1024 bytes, and the file stored is 4,620 bytes, it will occupy five clusters on the physical disk. As this disk is formatted with these parameters of 1024 bytes per cluster or 512 bytes per sector. But logically, the file only occupies 4,682 bytes. So roughly just over four, one, two, three, four and a half clusters. The other half of the last cluster will be considered slack space. You can pause the video here to understand this a bit more. The purple area is depicting the directory tree of how our C drive looks in our Windows OS. So the root directory is C and the other directories are the ones existing over here. I'll quickly show you how to install and set up Bless Hex Editor and also install the Sleuth Kit. We're going to be using the Hex Editor as it's simple and it's also free to use. So let's navigate to the Ubuntu Software Manager and click on the search button and then type in Bless and select Bless Hex Editor in the search results and click the install button and enter your password and the installation should immediately begin. And while we wait for the installation, go and open up our terminal because what we need to do with terminal is we need to change the layout that the Bliss Hex Editor has within. Um, by default, it automatically um, adjusts its layout to the size of the window, but uh, we need it to be 16 bytes per row. 
So that way it's easy to use all the templates that I'll provide against the data that's shown in the hex editor. So first change the directory to the install location by typing cd forward slash usr forward slash share forward slash bliss. And then what we're going to say is sudo cp bliss 16 bytes per row layout space bliss dash default layout and then enter your password when you're prompted and that's done and while we have the terminal window open let's um, complete the sleuth kit installation by typing sudo apt get install sleuth kit um, sleuth kit provides specific commands and switches with the terminal that are required for this analysis. So again, a hypothetical scenario is that our department has taken a criminal into custody and have confiscated their USB flash drive containing sensitive data which is crucial to the investigation. Our job as a digital forensic analyzer is to extract all data containing on this USB either by means of manual carving or cluster chain rebuilding. I will cover both over several segments of how to extract each file individually or rebuild the entire cluster chain then to access the USB in its full form. So after downloading the image that we're going to practice on from the description below you should always perform a validation check for forensic security and accuracy so if we go into the image once you've extracted it um, you can see that there was a text file associated with it so we can see that this was imaged by FTK Imager version 3.3.0.5 and it's also provided a MD5 and SHA1 checksum this FAT16 lab blog 001 that particular file is identified but this unique number and we need to validate it so what we're going to be doing is let's open up terminal again and we're going to be using the um, md5 sum command so you just type in first you need to navigate to the directory sorry so i'm going to change the directory to desktop and that one Actually, no, I'm going to copy the files over first. So I'm going to copy these two files over to this um, new folder that I've made here. And let's open that one. And then I'm going to also navigate to that new folder instead of the previous folder. And what we want to do is we want to put the command in md5sum and the name of the file, so fat16lab. And you can see that it's given you a the piece of text, the checksum of that file. And if we paste... If we copy that text and we were to paste it here and all we have to do is compare to see if there's any differences just to, just for validation sake and everything matches so then we uh, we validated the file that this is the exact copy of the original and that way we're only manipulating the copy and editing and changing the copy around so that way the original doesn't change and then we're also going to take I'm going to open up LibreOffice over here because we'll take down some notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run another command, which is fsstat. So fsstat. And I'm going to run it against the, um, the image, the FAT16 image. And fsstat will show us the logical layout of the disk image. And this is very useful and we're going to extract um, extract some of this information that we've been provided. So I'm going to need the file system type and I'm also going to take the volume name and volume ID. I will also take the fat starting area. So the fat, fat2, don't need the cluster area, but I will take the content information. So the cluster size and the sector size. This is going to be very helpful when we come to the calculation part. So you can see that this properly performed the logical layout of the... Um, it performed a check and then it 
shows us a result of the logical layer and it's very useful information because we need specific numbers from here for the calculation to be able to carve out files later on in later segments. So this brings us to the end of this video as this can these parts can be lengthy. I've broken this this um, video down into separate videos. In the next segment, I will show you the calculations used to find out where the files are stored in the data area and how to de determine the end of the file so that we have a starting and an ending point. So a section that we will carve out and then create a new um, file and paste the data in and create that file from that data extracted from their hex editor. Like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to my channel so that you are notified about my newest releases and if you have any questions ask in the comments below and either I or the community will be able to help you out. I'll leave a link to the image that I'm using, this particular image in the description so that you can download and perform the file carving digital forensic analysis yourself to achieve a better understanding. Stay tuned for the next segment of the manual file carving.